I need Pro Devil to at least give it a try. It's just, when it comes down to it, it's a good bit of fun, teamwork, and yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a good time. So all of my best memories from Eastern Front definitely come from the night battles. You know, not being able to see your enemy and it's, it all gets very hectic, it just adds another element to the game. I think one time that stands out was when we were on patrol looking for the other team and um, they ended up setting fireworks on us and that was that was very intense, scary just having these missiles launched at you, that definitely stands out. So how do you get around the safety aspects of the game? So one of the ways is we have a strict sort of, whenever a game isn't going on everyone has the safety on the guns and the guns pointed down um, but when the game is in play everyone has to be wearing eye protection and that can be like a mask or even just safety goggles that's just to stop anyone getting their eyes shot out and for the most part everyone follows the rules and if you take any goggles off during their match then you're disqualified Eastern Front is really um, you know a tradition that we've we've had that's evolved over many years. So what what really started off as you know a game that we just play with toy guns when it snowed, which hence the name Eastern Front, um, which was referring to the German Operation Barbarossa in World War Two. It, it can take up the whole day. I mean, there've been times that we played twelve hours. So as the years went on, toy guns turned into BB guns. Um, and years went on and we got more and more equipment. So it, yeah, Eastern Front is airsoft skirmishing, to put it, to put it shortly. Then, it, you know, the origins of it come from just messing about with a bunch of toy guns. And now we've, we've sort of turned it into, you know, a, a recreational hobby. They would be structured, um, sorting out weapons and gear, getting everything ready, making sure batteries are charged, weapons are loaded. Um, and then we will just, as soon as ever, we'll have a brief uh, safety talk and then we'll go off and well, we'll decide what game mode we're going to play. Often if it's attack and defend, play one attack and then they switch and the other team defend. Um, we just cycle through the game modes, have a break for lunch. It, it can take up the whole day. I mean, there have been times that we've played 12 hours. So we've got seven acres of land. Um, it's woodland area. We've got bushes and thickets. So we've got a wooden fort built with pillboxes and watchtowers and um, one advantage you have with paintball is the paint doesn't lie. You know, you get hit with a paintball and you can see that you're hit. With a BB there's an element of honesty that's needed and this sometimes causes friction with games. But it's, with, with paintball you, you, know you, you know you're playing a uh, sort of pretend game but you, with airsoft, and all the equipment that comes with airsoft, you feel closer to what it would be like in a real skirmish. Obviously, nowhere near. But I I find that it's people associate airsoft with more of more reenacting a battle situation, whereas I think paintball is treated more of a sport slash game. I remember one of the lads that I shot with a a mini me, which you'll probably know of Call of Duty. Um, split a zip open. Everyone versus George. So that's aka everyone versus George, also known as downed pilot. So that's to replicate a situation where a pilot would be shot down uh, behind enemy lines and then there is a sort of attack and retrieve force that's sent out to capture him. That is normally one person versus six or seven people. Uh, which actually has a surprising outcome. Is that but not unfair? It, yeah, it does, sound, it does, does sound unfair, but the I think the skills of George um, make up for that. There's been several occasions where he's taken down all seven of us. And again, he's got brilliant... Most occasions. Most occasions, yeah. You know, I think it's... Um, he's very skilled at finding hiding spots that we've got no idea about and remaining in them. Right, okay, so down pilot this time. Yeah. There's one of them out there, that's three. Where do you reckon he could be? Um, well, last time he was hidden away in the bushes, wasn't he? So 
but okay. he could be towards the thicket. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But is it worth Let's trekking? Let's break around the right, and then we'll come back around. Right. Do you reckon we should clear out the, the bushes? Yeah. All right. Okay. Alright, go left, go left. Alright, clear. Alright, safety's on. Safety's on. What to do? Right, um Right, so crouch down here. He's he's gonna he's probably gonna come up this way, isn't he? So we'll uh We'll ambush him when he comes up here because he'll be searching the fort, won't we? So crouch down. Just wait here. There he is, there he is. Do you see him? Keep shooting. Right, cut left, cut left, cut left. You're out. Oh no. Um oh, right, right, just get down, get down. I'll I'll oh, I'll sort you a magazine. Right, go left, go left, go left. As time went by, we sort of adapted it and it evolved into a completely other thing with the inclusion of these airsoft guns. Yeah. So it went from a, you know, playing around to something yeah. quite a bit more serious yeah. than that. For those who haven't played airsoft or haven't even played paintball, what, what's the difference between the two? The BB pellets are a lot cheaper, so you can end up having a lot more for a lot less. Um, the games tend to be a lot longer with airsoft, and they also require more tactics. The uh, another major thing is that airsoft there's a lot more variation in the guns. You know, you can go from a shotgun to a sniper to a massive machine gun, where paintballs are normally all the same, and uh, in my opinion, it's just not as fun. Capture the prisoner. Normally it's you've got a prisoner and then you've got to escort them from A to B. And on the way you've obviously got people that want to grab the prisoner and capture him and bring him back to their base. The prisoner really doesn't have much say. They can try and how, escape. How is the prisoner treated in this game? Um, well, yeah, we're pretty rough with the prisoner. Uh, there'll be industrial strength hand ties. Uh, we'll blindfold him. Um, so it's quite an ordeal for whoever's playing that, and I think it could be quite quite fun and scary at times. So and obviously for the team that's escorting the prisoner from A to B, they don't know when they're going to be attacked along the route, so they're constantly on the lookout. I'm going. I've got a list of uh, game modes that we we have in the game, so I want you to quickly and briefly just explain how each one works. So the main one being defend the fort. As I said before, we've got. A wooden fort that's constructed within a small woodland area. Um, and the fort has got pillboxes, uh, watchtowers, and almost like a little gateway. So you can take up defensive positions in the port, the fort, and after 30 to 60 seconds peacetime, the attacking force moves, takes a position and moves in. And it's, it's really a attack and defend. And if the attacking team can overrun the fortified position, they win. It's like a last man standing kind of gameplay. Game boys. Good game. Good game. It's not sort of your standard camping when you're going out. It's yeah, pretty action packed.